Welcome everyone to the first What's Up webinar of 2019. Today's topic is Manufacturing Trends and the Right Scan Enhanced Labor Post Module. Thank you for joining us. My name is Sue Pogachnik, and I'm the Marketing Manager here at Brightsoft, and we'll be helping moderate today's session. Ryan Winicky, one of our Rightsoft implementation and support specialists, will also be presenting today. Ryan and I will talk about some of the trends we're seeing in the manufacturing industry. Then, Ryan will show you the new Enhanced Labor Post module that we have in development for RightScan. At the end of the webinar, you'll have an opportunity to ask questions. Feel free to submit your questions via the chat window at any time during the webinar. If you have any technical issues, you can let us know via the chat window as well. So let's get started. What's happening in manufacturing? Well, when you look at the data, The manufacturing industry is doing quite well. Our customers are telling us that their output is growing due to increased demand, but may slow down later this year as the economy cools, particularly in the U.S. as the impact from the tax cut and jobs at begins to wane, and they feel the effects of the recent government shutdown. According to the site Trading Economics, U.S. manufacturing production rose 2.9% year-over-year as of January 2019. Looking ahead, they estimate that production growth will slow to 1.9% by 2020. While the U.S. economy looks good, competition is strong and costs for raw materials and labor are rising. The increase in raw materials costs partially stems from the recent trade tariffs imposed, which has had an impact on other markets as well. And one of the things that I've actually found quite interesting is this last fall when I actually met with customers in Canada, many of them were mentioning to me that the raw material costs were on an upward trend, some of which really stemmed from the tariffs that were imposed. And this was really making them focus closer attention to sourcing as well as evaluating other areas of their business where they could gain efficiencies and reduce costs. So we are seeing this affect our direct customer base as well. Labor costs are on an upward trend due to rising minimum wages and low unemployment rates. 22 per two states enacted higher minimum wage rates in 2019. Our customers are telling us it's really difficult to attract and hire workers with the right skill set, which also leads to higher labor costs. Several markets, including the U.S., are experiencing a labor and skills gap, particularly with the low unemployment rates. Unemployment hit historic lows of 4% in the U.S. and the U.K. last year. Unemployment rates in other markets, such as Canada and Australia, are hovering around 5.5%. All around us, we're seeing help-wanted signs at manufacturing operations and other businesses. You know, last year, one of our customers told us that they end up poaching employees from nearby manufacturing operations, and those neighboring manufacturers do the same thing in return. According to consulting firm Deloitte and the National Association of Manufacturers, three and a half million manufacturing jobs will likely be needed in the next decade, and two million will go unfilled due to the skills gap. 80% of manufacturers are reporting a moderate or serious shortage of qualified applicants for skilled and highly skilled production positions. So these market forces create barriers to stronger manufacturing growth. It's easy to see why manufacturers continue to invest in warehouse automation to streamline processes, improve efficiency, and drive down costs to compete locally and at the global level, plus address cybersecurity issues. According to a 2018 study by Peerless Research Group, 90% of the manufacturers surveyed plan to either upgrade or implement a WMS system over the next two years. 
the majority of manufacturers are using some type of warehouse management technology today, but few are fully automated across all warehouse processes. More than half are using some type of barcode scanning solution, but they might be only using barcode scans for selected processes. The majority of receiving and order picking is still done manually. Yes, and interestingly enough, this is one of the areas that many of our prospects and customers, when they still come to us, are really looking to improve that process and how they can automate, automate that process, but is one of the more challenging ones for them to grasp. Uh, this is one of those areas that customers can really see a tremendous value in automating their order picking and the fulfillment process to ensure the accuracy and timeliness of order processing, but is one of those big hurdles for people to make that commitment and jump to going to an automated system as well. Over the next two years, approximately 60% of manufacturers surveyed intend to work on improving order accuracy, picking efficiency, and finding ways to reduce labor through software and hardware alike. Robotics, voice, and wearable technology, such as label printers, are continuing to emerge. Handheld hardware is evolving as the Android operating system takes hold and Microsoft sunsets the Windows mobile operating system in 2020, which is right around the corner. Yes, and on a day-to-day -day basis, even here at WriteSoft, we're seeing our customer base starting to request more and more about the Android platform and some of the devices that they can start to implement to. Uh, it's really starting to take hold and we're starting to see that uh, over the last few months, I would say three to four months, we were really seeing the adoption of customers starting to be very curious about the Android platform and starting to think about their next steps with it as well. Clearly, today's manufacturers need to invest in areas that will improve their productivity, strengthen their customer relationships, increase their labor efficiency, and attract enough people with the right skills and talent to help them achieve their growth targets. So they're investing in technology to better align their labor and their production capabilities, investing in forecasting systems, workforce and labor management systems, as well as performance dashboards. Well, you can't improve what you don't measure, right? In order to increase efficiency and accuracy, manufacturers need to be able to quickly measure and analyze data. While most have implemented key metrics such as orders or pieces per hour and inventory accuracy metrics, roughly half are doing manual data collection today to gauge productivity. Manufacturers typically have job standards, but when was the last time those standards were updated or individual processes analyzed? Clearly, manufacturers need real-time access to better information and time tracking to test against their job standards, which leads us to our discussion of the enhancements we're making to RightScan today with the new enhanced labor post module we have in development that we're planning to call LaborTrack. Ryan? Thank you very much, Sue, and thanks for all the information. Um, so for people to, imp in order to improve processes, customers have been asking for RightScan to have the capability to simply track time for jobs by punching in and out and job tracking that time that's spent, posting it directly into CISPRO through the labor post module. So what this new module really allows employees to do is simply track those in and out punches for the day along with those in and out punches for jobs. Operators can simply use the labor tracking module by entering or scanning their CISPRO employee ID and beginning to work on those jobs for today. So one of the benefits that we've done is still keeping that methodology of being able to barcode scan and very quickly do what an operator needs to do in the right scan system. So you could use the module on a per operator basis or even have a terminal that's set up where multiple employees can come into the system, scan what they need to scan and begin working for the day in a very quick manner and capturing that time out on the shop floor. The module is actually able to be configured based on what you want to collect for the job information that's available in CISPRO. So in the admin setup of the labor post, customers are able to define if they'd like to collect 
machine or whether they'd like to uh, collect different rate information when an operator is starting to begin a job. Also on the flip side of that, when stopping a job, they can configure the system whether or not they may want to capture good quantity or scrap quantity or scrap reason codes. And this is what really allows the customers to define what information they want to collect in the system to make it as detailed as they want or as simple as they wanted with the system. The other benefit that you can actually do with the system as well that goes unrecognized is the ability to capture non-productive information within SysPro as well. So bringing in those non-productive codes and allowing your employees to clock in against those non-productive hours so you really know where your employee's time is being spent for the day, all with an application that you may already have implemented in your customer's sites that are using RightScan on a day-to-day -day basis for other features and functionality uh, or for new prospects as well. So what are we gonna do with all that? So in order to improve these processes, customers have been asking for the reporting capabilities as well. Uh, the ability to run reports on transactional data and see specifically what's happening in their system along with RightScan specifically. So supervisors are able to see these reports for employees using the labor track module to view their time clock punches, their break punches, as well as their actual job punches. So this data can be used to compare and analyze employee performance on the amount of hours that they may be being paid for versus the amount of hours that they're actually working on jobs or non-productive things within their operations as well. It really gives you that visual to understand your numbers and really better understand what's going on a day-to-day -day basis. The reporting application also allows you to apply simple rounding rules to the data based on 15 minute increments. So for example, if an operator clocks in at 656, they can have a rounded clock punch that goes up to seven as well. The reporting application also allows you to sort and filter and group along with any sort of organization that you wanna build into that report and the fields that you want displayed in that report as well. It gives you all of that configuration uh, capabilities. The next steps that you're gonna wanna do with this is what are you doing with the data? Are you exporting it to Excel? So that way you can import it into maybe a payroll system or modify it to be used with your payroll or simply printing off a PDF report that gets used every single Monday in your Monday morning meetings with your employees to better see where their hours are being allocated. There's a number of different ways it can be consumed on a day-to-day -day basis to really help improve your organization and the visibility throughout your organization as well. With that being said, let's actually jump in and take a look at the right time labor track module in action, uh, along with the reporting if you haven't had a chance to see that previously. So while we do that, I'm just gonna switch my screen here. And we're gonna take a look at RightScan. So in the manufacturing area of RightScan, you're gonna see a labor tracking module. This is a module that you could leave open on a specific terminal or operators could just go into their uh, RightScan and do this on a day-to-day -day basis. The first thing an operator is gonna do is actually put in their employee ID. Now this is the employee ID directly from SysPro. Um, so it's associated directly with those employees that are set up in SysPro. They can simply scan in that ID, scan it off of a badge, or manually key it in as well. Now you're going to notice the first thing I have the option to do is clock in for the day. As soon as I clock in for the day, it's going to capture that time and allow me to begin working on something. So for example, now that I've clocked in for the day, I want to start a new job. So to start a new job, I can simply scan my job traveler if I have that, or just simply enter my job that I wanna work on. Now this is all coming in directly from CISPRO. So if I view this job, I'm gonna see what's been completed so far in CISPRO, what's the required, uh, what has been done so far from the labor transactions as well. We're gonna simply grab it and we're gonna work on operation two. Uh, the system has automatically brought in my work center. I have it configured to set up to do that in this way. I'm going to put in the machine ID that I'm working on as well. I have now defaulted my time type to runtime. That's what I want my operators to be using. If I want them to be able to select that information, I can also configure the system to do so. So now that we have our information, we're going to go ahead and start that job. And you're going to notice that it goes into my list of running jobs. 
Also, if we take a look at the top here, you're gonna notice that the operators are able to see their status, if they're clocked in for the day, when they clocked in, as well as the total amount of hours they've spent working on jobs for the day. So it just gives them some quick information about what they're doing. If you allow operators, they can also work on multiple jobs to capture that at the same time. So if I wanted to start working on another uh, job because I'm running multiple machines, I could capture all that time at the same time as well. Now, if I wanted to come out of the system because I'm done in here, I can come in as an operator. So if I'm a different operator now, employee two, they've been working on this job for quite some time. I'm gonna come into the system and I wanna actually stop the job that I'm working on. We're gonna go ahead and stop the task. It's gonna then give me my stop uh, prompts that I want to capture. So in my system, I wanna be able to capture the good quantity complete, as well as any scrap or scrap reason codes that I want associated with this. And I can go ahead and then stop the job. And that's gonna capture that time and send that 2.83 hours of time into the labor post module directly in CISPRO in real time. That way it's reflected against those jobs. Once you're done in here, if the operator wants to, they can go out for day or out for break and move on and the next operator can come back into the system to do their time tracking as well. So taking a quick look at that, it's a very simple application to be able to provide your employees something quick and easy to capture that time and integrate it directly with CISPRO in a very simplified fashion. So with that being said, the next thing we're gonna take a look at is the actual reporting of all this information that we're collecting. If you guys have not had a chance to take a look at the new reporting application that we released last year, it can be a very useful utility. Um, just as a quick overview, we're gonna be focusing in on the employee time uh, and job time. However, if you haven't taken a look at the different transactions that you can see that are happening within your warehouse, we can go ahead and take a look at that to see all the different transactions that are taking place in RightScan uh, over the last 90 days. It breaks it down per user for you. Uh, and it just gives you a quick view of all of that information. Same goes for pallets. If you have any customers or you're a customer using pallet tracking, you can gain a lot of functionality and visibility into your operations, being able to sort and search for those pallet information, find what you need within the system. All right, with that being uh, aside, let's actually focus in on what we were talking about with labor tracking. So the employee time is all being tracked within the system. So when we take a look here and we wanna look at this week's data, we can see all of our different employees that are in the system. We can see their hours, uh, their time clock hours, as well as their break hours. You'll also notice I have two different hour fields here. One is a total time and one is a rounded time. So with that being said, that allows me to also capture that rounded time if I wanna use it for maybe payroll purposes. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Uh, payroll purposes, it can be exported from here. You can simply select my export to Excel and that's gonna give me my Excel document that I need. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this is very configurable as to how do I wanna group it? What columns do I want displayed? I apologize, you guys. I've been battling a little bit of a sickness lately. Um, the last thing we're gonna take a look at is the job time. So with the job time, this allows you to really break it down from a different perspective, uh, whether I wanna see my employees or whether I wanna see my jobs from a time perspective. In here, you're gonna notice my subtotals. You're also gonna notice that I have a group by job. If I wanted to see where's my employees' times being spent on job, I can simply go in and change how I wanna organize this. If there's fields that aren't displayed that I maybe wanna see like machine notes, reference, uh, my rounded start and my rounded end time, I can bring in all of that information as well. All right, so with that being said, I'm gonna jump back to the PowerPoint here. And Sue, if you wanna just talk a little bit about the what's going on with Android devices and where that is happening, or what's going on with the different Android devices in the industry as well right now. 
All right. I think as we talked earlier, the hardware industry uh, is driving Android adoption. And as Windows Mobile is being sunset over the next two years, the market's been transitioning to those Android mobile devices that are a lot more cost effective. Uh, they're a lot more lightweight, ergonomically correct, and are offered at a greater uh, price point and offer greater efficiency. So with all of these enhancements, it's really no wonder that the market is moving towards Android. But as we talked earlier, lots of people in the market don't realize that Windows Mobile is going to be sunset next year. And they aren't aware necessarily of all the advantages that the new Android devices have to offer. All right. And with that being said, we have a lot of customers that have been asking uh, us about RightScan's Android version or wanting to get their hands on it. It is available for download. Uh, the Android can be downloaded with our standard RightScan package. Uh, and there's actually an APK file in there that uh, you're able to install on your Android devices, whether it's a phone, a tablet, or if you actually have an Android handheld device that you wanna check out RightScan on, all you gotta do is put that APK file onto the Android device and you're up and running with RightScan. So if you do have any questions on downloading it or accessing it or how to get it onto your Android device, please feel free to reach out to our support team. You can reach them at support at rightsoft.com. We're starting to see this adoption and it's a really exciting time for us as well, being able to add in new capabilities and new functionality uh, alongside new devices that are entering the space from Zebra and Honeywell as well. All right, with that being said, we're gonna walk into uh, questions if there's any questions we can answer. All right, we'll give people a, a second to answer some, ask some questions, but I think the first one here is, when will the new labor track module be available? So we've actually completed develop, uh, development on the labor track module, and it's actually expected to be released next week with a new version of RightScan. So, uh, if you have any questions or want to try it out, uh, please feel free to reach out to our team. It will be available next week, uh, and we're really excited to get it in the hands of our customers. Okay, Ryan, another question here relates to pricing. How will the labor track module be priced? So RightScan's labor track module is an add-on module, very similar to pallet tracking, if you're familiar with that. So we're pricing it at $5,000 US to have the add-on module. One thing to keep in mind, RightScan's reporting functionality is included in the standard product. So you do have access to that with the standard product, and then the labor tracking piece is the simple add-on, and you can also utilize the reporting piece of it. Okay, another question we have here is that earlier you mentioned that, you know, RightScan runs on Android devices. Can you tell us which handheld devices are certified for use? Yeah, so there's a few different Android devices that we've actually certified here at RightSoft. Uh, one is the MC33 uh, Zebra device. It's actually a great little device uh, that gives you a lot of form function as well. Uh, another device is the TC8000, which is a Zebra device as well. Uh, those are both certified devices that uh, we have customers running with uh, and have used it in-house and all of that. But if you're interested, if there's other devices that you're looking at as well, please feel free to reach out to our support team. They can answer questions in regards to those other devices as well. All right. Well, hang on. It looks like I got another question here. How is, um, how is this module different from right time? So the difference between this module, what we've really tried to do is include a simplified labor tracking into RightScan. So when we look at late, our, our RightTime product versus uh, the labor track, RightTime offers a lot more functionality around rules with being able to provide approvals to uh, supervisors approving transactions, also being able to have multiple integrations. So Right time may be integrated to CISPRO along with a payroll system directly as well. So you could be integrating it from multiple directions. Some of the other things that really separate it are a lot of the rules that are built into right time and the, the logic that you can build in specifically around how you split time, for example. If I want to split by quantity weighted or I want to split 
uh, the time evenly between different jobs that people are working on. So there's a number of different enhancements. This is just a very simplified version in an existing product of ours, uh, enhancing upon our labor post module. All right, Ryan, there's another question here as it relates to functionality with the new module. Will employees be able to punch in while another user is already clocked in when sharing a terminal? Uh, yes, so what you can do is a lot of times customers will set up a generic employee uh, that or a generic user that logs into the actual write scan application to leave it up on a terminal and then employee IDs are actually able to be used uh, within the application to capture that time. So when you notice that I put in that employee ID, you can have multiple different employee IDs share in that and it's not logging them out of the application as a whole, just as the out of the labor track portion. Okay, that looks like that's the end of our questions, Ryan. All right, well, I appreciate everyone uh, taking the time with us today to talk about our new labor track module and what's going on. If you guys have any questions or interest of learning more or anything along those lines, please feel free to reach out to myself or anyone from our team. We have our contact information there. Uh, love to have a further conversation if there were any questions that didn't get answered today as well. All right, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, everyone.